Hello everyone, uh, my name is Krasantina Krasakopoulou and I will pre be presenting you the joint work that we did with Philip Rodbinski and Katja Hoffman on the paper Towards Conversational Recommender Systems. So the main motivation for this work is that imagine you're in a new city and you want to find out where you should have dinner tonight. The problem is that there are so many options. So if for example you wanted to ask a local then in order to give you like a recommendation for where to have dinner tonight then probably he would first ask you a few clarifying questions like do you like seafood or do you have a car and then he would give you a recommendation that you should go there and then the goal of every such question would be to essentially infer your latent preferences about what you like and what you don't like and these questions would be contextual in the sense that if there are many great restaurants around the corner there is no point in asking you this car question so the idea behind this work is that instead of asking a local, you could have this conversational recommender system that would have a similar interaction with you as what a local would have with you. So essentially, you could go to your phone and you could say, can you recommend to me a restaurant for tonight? And then it would ask you something like, sure, how hungry are you? And you say, not very hungry. And then it asks you, do you prefer Chinese or Indian today? And you say, I prefer Chinese. And then it gives you a recommendation, like, would you like to go to Orchid? And you say, yes, thanks. And then you go there and you have fun. So the idea there is that this conversational recommender system is going to ask you a few questions. And this go the goal of every question is to infer your preferences, but also to understand which are the questions that are better for the system in order to be able to more quickly give your recommendation. So the contribution of this work is uh, that we're giving this novel view of human-like recommenders that converse with new users in order to infer their preferences. We're giving this fully online learning approach for recommendation so that we argue that such an interaction with uh, the system can be captured with an online learning approach. And we're using both absolute and relative feedback elicitation mechanisms for that. So the system can ask questions of the form, do you like restaurant A? And you can say yes or no. Or it can ask you, do you prefer restaurant A over restaurant B? And then you can say yes, no, or I like neither. And we also propose a set of question selection strategies in order to decide which is the best question to select to show to the user. So with that, I will first give you this big picture of what our interactive recommendation pipeline looks like. So the idea is that first we pick a model that I'm going to be talking about in a minute, which is a latent factor model. That is this model that is able to capture what is the space of the items and what is the space of the questions. And also we pick a preference elicitation mechanism, which is a mechanism that selects the questions and also is using the feedback that you get from the user back into the model. Then we initialize the model with some offline data where the data are of the form that several users have interacted with several restaurants in the past. So we use this offline data in order to initialize our model. And then what happens is that first the mechanism selects a question to ask to the user, then the user answers the question, and then all the model parameters are updated based on this feedback that the user gave, which means that the beliefs of the system about the user and about the item in the question are going to change. And then this question is removed from the set of allowed questions. Then again, like uh, the mechanism selects the next question, the user answers the question, and so on. And finally, the model presents the user the recommendation list. So in this whole procedure here, what is obvious is that there is this human in the loop, meaning that there was this model that actively decided what to show to the user, and then there was this user that actively responded to that question and gave that as feedback back to the model. So we're capturing that in this work, and this is something that is important in all interactive systems and only recommendations. So when we want to think how we want to design a conversational recommender system, there are two key pieces that we want to think about. The first is, what do we want to ask the user? And the second is, how do we want to ask that? So the roadmap for this talk is going to be that uh, for what to ask and how to ask, we're going to be using this model a latent factor model that exploits the fact that there is this implicit structure among the items and among the users. And this model is going to help us to efficiently propagate the feedback. Second, we're going to have exploration exploitation strategies that are able to probe the space of the questions in order to be asking as few questions as possible and then give a good recommendation. And third, we're going to be using feedback elicitation mechanisms, which are going to be of form absolute or relative. Okay, so first starting with the model, 
the idea is that if you had to ask a local again uh, to give you a recommendation, what he would do is that he would strategically select every question with the goal of being able to infer as quickly as possible what you are like. And so similarly, we want to have some principled way of selecting the questions. So instead of having all these bunch of restaurants that someone could be asking you, do you like this, do you like that, and so on, she would have, he would probably be strategically asking you about the strong candidates so that he can confirm or he can delete his candidates from the set of questions. So for the latent factor model, we are using two different types of models depending on the type of observation we have access to. So if we have access to observations of the form user, restaurant, like or dislike, we're using exactly probabilistic mass factorization, which is basically saying that uh, we're modeling the users and the items and we are uh, basically, uh, we're projecting them in some low dimensional embedding where uh, the similarity between a user and a restaurant can be captured via their, uh, their product between their trade vector. So essentially we have I is the user, J is the item, uh, every user is represented by this latent variable user bias and also the latent variable of user trade which is a latent factor. And similarly, the items, they have the item bias, which captures how popular a restaurant is, and also they have the item trait, which essentially is this latent embedding of the restaurant in the same space where the user is. And so this is a probabilistic graphical model, and what is nice about it is that it's going to be giving us access to probability distribution of how likely a user is, is to like every restaurant. So this is this noisy affinity node that you can see over there which is cap captured by the sum of the two biases and also the inner product between the two trait vectors. And later we're going to see that we're going to be using this probability distribution in order to be doing this exploration exploitation trade-off. However, users are more often better at doing pairwise comparisons instead of saying absolute judgments of the form, I love this or I hate that. So in that case, we might have access to, for, to observations of the form user, item A, item B, and that would mean that the user would prefer item A over item B. So for that, the model is exactly as before, so you're going to have access to this noisy affinity distribution of user I with item J, but also you're going to have access to user I and item H noisy affinity. And so then, if you take the difference of the two, you will have access to this noisy affinity difference distribution, and then if you sample from this distribution and you threshold that to zero, you will get this observation of whether the user I will prefer item J over item H. So this is the basic idea behind this latent factor model. Now using this latent factor model, we can be using these offline observations that we have that several users and several items, um, they have been interacted, they have, several users have interacted with several items in the past. So then we can use this embedding that we gained from this model in order to warm start our question selection phase. So the idea behind that is that we want to, as quickly as possible, to figure out what the user is like. So if we had some past information about where these restaurants lie in the embedding and where past users lie in the embedding, we could be using that in order to warm start our question selection phase. And the way we do that is that for every restaurant, we initialize the prior of the restaurant to be the posterior distribution that we obtained based on this latent factor model. And then for the cold start user, meaning this is a new user that comes now to our system and we don't know anything about him, so we can assume that he's the average offline user. And we model that by saying that his trait vector is going to be the mean trait vector over all offline users. And similarly, his bias is going to be the mean bias over all offline users. And so then we will place the cold start user in the, bedding, in the bedding as you see over there in the middle. Now, um, we, have this, this, we have to decide what are going to be our question selection strategies. So we want strategies that are going to allow us to be very effective in learning very quickly the user. So for that, we're using banded learning inspired strategies and also active learning inspired strategies. So the banded learning strategies, the idea is that they want to balance this exploration exploitation trade-off. And there the trade-off is that essentially you want to uh, keep looking at the most promising areas of the latent embedding, but at the same time, you want to explore the rest of the, the areas of the latent embedding because the most promising items, they might actually lie there. So for this, we're using Thompson sampling, for example, as a banded strategy. 
And the idea there is that remember that the absolute model, the, it had this noisy affinity variable where this was this Gaussian distribution and we have access to this, the variance of the distribution. So the variance of the distribution can capture how confident the model is in the belief that it has about the user. So then if we sample from this distribution, that will mean that this will give us, if the distribution is very broad at the beginning, that will mean that we will explore. But then as we incorporate the feedback back into the model, this distribution is going to become more peaked and probably is going to be centered around the correct um, noisy affinity of the user. And so that will be exploiting whatever we have learned about the user so far. Similarly, we have the upper confidence bound technique, which can pick the item with the highest mean plus variance. And now for active learning techniques, the idea is that you want to pick the question that are going to give us the most information about the user. So uh, one technique would be a variance reduction technique. So that would mean that you show the item that has the maximum variance in its uh, noisy affinity. Or you could be showing the item that has the maximum uh, trait vector. That will mean that it has the maximum information in its trait vector, meaning the highest L2 norm. And we have as baselines, greedy technique, random, uh, and so on. Now, we use one of these question selection strategies, and then we show, do you like restaurant Cafe Siciliana? And then the user says no. So then we observe this, we have this observation that this cold store user and this Cafe Siciliana, you have a zero. So you incorporate that back into the absolute model. And so that what we will give you is that you can infer now with expectation provocation all the variables in this latent factor model. So the user trait vector is going to move in the embedding. Also the item trait vector is going to move and the noisy affinity distribution is going to shift and it's going to become more picked. But what is more interesting is that not only this item that it was in the question is going to change its noisy affinity, but also all the items which are nearby in the latent embedding are going to change. And this is exactly what allows us to explore the space of questions more quickly and cut it down more quickly. So right now I have described all the pieces that you need in order to be able to select absolute questions. Um, I'm going to move now to how can we select relative questions. So the idea there would be that you want to select the question of the form, do you prefer restaurant A over restaurant B? And so for that we propose three different feedback licitation mechanisms. So the main insight is that this restaurant A and this restaurant B which uh, comprise the question, they should be as far as possible in the latent embedding because you don't want to be asking the user about very similar things. You don't want to make him choose. And also you want to be exploring as fast as possible different areas of the embedding. So for restaurant A you do exactly as you did before. For example, you use Thompson sampling and you show the item that has the maximum sampled noisy affinity. But then for restaurant B, what you want to do is that, as I said, you want to be as diverse as possible compared to item A. So the way we do that is that we're incorporating this virtual observation that says that let's assume that this user disliked item A. So we have this virtual observation and we put it back into the absolute model. And now we can infer what is the user trait distribution. And using that as a prior, we can then now pick again with Thompson sampling the item with the maximum sampled noisy affinity. And based on this construction, item A and item B are going to be different. Now, there, there could be, you have this pairwise now preference. Let's say the user preferred Cafe Siciliano over the other restaurant. So there, you could translate this relative preference. If you want to incorporate this relative preference into an absolute model, you'd have to translate that into an absolute reward. So one way would be that you can say that, okay, just the user, he liked the, only the preferred item. And then you incorporate only this positive observation. So that's the apps pause model. Alternatively, you could translate that into saying that he likes the preferred item and he dislikes the non-preferred item. So there you have two observations, one positive and one negative. So that's the apps pause and neg feedback elicitation. Alternatively, you could be saying that since you want to ask a relative question, it might make sense to actually use the pairwise model for that. So for restaurant day, we do exactly as before. We pick the one with uh, Thompson sampling based on the absolute model. But then for restaurant B, we use a technique which is inspired by dwelling bandits. And for that, we're using the restaurant which has the maximum, it's going to be more likely to be preferred compared to restaurant A. So that's going to be the item with the maximum noisy affinity difference compared to restaurant A. And then you incorporate that observation back into your model. So with that, I have uh, described our whole pipeline and I'm going to move to the experiments. So for the experiments, <coughs> 
we always have this offline phase where we have end users interacting with the end items and based on that we can gain the offline embedding with which we warm start the question selection phase. And we also have the online phase, which is the question selection phase, where the system interacts with the cold start users. So for the offline embedding, what we use in our, so the main motivation scenario here is that we wanted to do restaurant recommendation for Cambridge UK. So for that, for the offline data, we used from a major commercial search engine, uh, we searched for people who actually clicked or impressed on at least one Cambridge restaurant that we had identified from a major review service provider. And so based on that, we took the four month search log data and we identified the cookies of the people who had actually interacted with at least one of those restaurants. And so that then comprises our observations, our positive observations of users, items, and then we sampled also negative observations. And so we have 9,330 positive observations. Similarly, we have sampled negative observations. And this consists now our initial training matrix based on which we can get the offline embedding of the users and the items in this space. Now for the online data, the problem with interactive recommendation systems is that ideally what you would want to do is that you would want to have the users to be giving you ground truth for all possible set of questions. However, this is if you don't have an interactive system that is going to be hard to actually, because the space of the questions can actually be really, really big. So what we did is that we, con uh, we constructed this user study where it was an anonymous questionnaire of asking, would you consider restaurant X for your next Friday night dinner? And for that, we used a pool of people who were ended up being 28 individuals varying to various factors. And for the pool of the questions, we used restaurants. We carefully selected 10 restaurants. We were diverse in a variety of factors that we found were really uh, key for the people when selecting restaurants. And so based on this user study, we were able to get ground truth of just uh, these many people, 28 people, on just this limited pool of restaurants. But now the question is, how can you then generalize to all possible uh, restaurants, like these 289 Cambridge restaurants? So, and also, how can you bootstrap cold store users, because just 28 people might just not be enough, so you want to bootstrap more? So we use some sampling strategy to do that, which essentially is that for every person we sample the user, and for that we obtain what are his ratings on just these 10 restaurants. And then using our absolute model, we infer what is his user trade distribution for this user. And then we sample from that, we use that as a, pr as a prior, and we infer what is his rating distribution now for all possible Cambridge restaurants. And then we sample from that again. And that will give, you a, a, that will give us this noisy rating distribution for all possible Cambridge restaurants. So now the main questions we wanted to ask, uh, to answer in this paper is first of all, can all our methods learn effectively across the questions and across either absolute or relative feedback? So uh, we can see here, see, here I can show you for the three relative feedback questions. Uh, so you can see here in terms of average precision at top 10, which is after every question you measure how good the recommendation list is. So you can see that both the apps pause and the pairwise model, they are learning pretty well over time. But then what you can see is this apps pause negative because of the fact that it incorporates two observations where the one is positive and the other is negative. This, uh, when you, uh, at, at some time, like let's say after three questions, you keep asking him about things that he might like. So then you force negative observations on him. So that's why you can see this drop in the performance there. So from that we conclude that the method which is better for relative questions is the apps pause. Then we want to compare our absolute or relative questions better. And you can see from this picture that the absolute questions are better over time. However, we hypothesize that this happened because the offline embedding was based on absolute data. Then we can also see whether offline initialization helps. So you can see that just by placing the users and the items in the embedding based on the offline data, you get a boost in the initial performance from 0 0.2 to 0 0.6 which is a huge boost, but then you can see that there, when there is no offline initialization, you can get actually better performance over time, but that happens after, let's say, 14 questions. And finally, we compared the different exploration exploitation strategies or the different question selection strategies, and we found that, generally speaking, the banning inspired strategies, they are better because they tend to trade off this exploration exploitation trade off. So actually, for the absolute feedback, we found that all strategies, both the banded and the active learning, and even greedy was good. But then if we move to the relative questions, we saw that the Thompson sampling approach was the best one. And then active learning approaches, because they didn't balance this diversity across the questions, because they didn't have this exploration component, they weren't that good. So with that, I want to conclude. 
And so the main, goal, the main idea of this paper is that when vision recommender systems that converse with new users to learn their preferences, we saw that best performance can be achieved with absolute questions. However, when relative feedback is the one which is available, then again, you can see that th there is effective learning over time. We saw that offline learned embedding greatly boosts the initial performance. And also, we concluded that better inspired question selection strategies are very effective. So thank you so much. OK, so we have time for a couple questions. I'm going to keep this microphone, so please go to there on the right or on the left. Uh, walk up to the microphone and ask your question, please. In the meantime, while they're walking to the microphone, I'll ask you a question. Okay. So um, you did your experiment based on a single data set for restaurants. Uh, so the question I have is, how much do you think this approach generalizes to other domains and even to different sizes of data sets and sparsity in the data? Right. So I don't think there is anything specific in this whole pipeline in terms of restaurant recommendation, for example. So I would say that, generally speaking, for other domains of recommendation, that would as well work. Uh, also, the fact that we use this offline data that we used were kind of very different from the online data because the offline data were based on this search embedding uh, that wasn't the same as our online user study users. So I would expect that it would work well. Um, now, in terms of the sparsity issue, I mean, we didn't need, so for example, in our case, we didn't need to have that many positive and negative observations. So we just needed to have, a restaurant should be rated by at least a couple of users, I guess. Hi. Hey, thanks for your talk. It is really enlightening. So uh, one question I had, like, uh, so in this conversational recommendation framework, you are solving the cold user problem. So for cold item, on the other hand, like for example, in your restaurant, if a new restaurant comes up, right. then to solve those sort of issues, like how this can be leveraged. So you're talking, you're asking about cold start items. Is yeah. that the question? So right now we have assumed that all the items which are being shown in the online phase, they're going to be present in the offline phase. So right now we, we have just dealt with the cold start user problem. Hmm. But I guess the main idea there, so for example, for restaurant recommendation, the restaurants are there like, they, they should be somewhere in the offline embedding. I mean, it's not like, uh, for example, news articles that, so for example, for news recommendation, you could have this cold start item problem. But for our setting, we didn't have this issue. So we haven't dealt with this. Okay, there's time for one last question. Um, I was sort of curious why you didn't look at sort of relative context. Right. Am I a tourist? What did I eat last night? What did I eat this morning? To try to pick the things that people either want to have because they're in a special place or don't want to have because they've already eaten a couple of them. Right. So you're asking about several features that you might have? Is that it? Yeah. Why well, you didn't think of... The so you could incorporate external features in the model. Right now the model assumes that the only observations you have are just whether you liked or disliked restaurants. But then you could imagine having also explicit features about the restaurants and explicit features about the user. And you could be using that as an external variable in your model. So for that, for example, instead of PMF, you could be using the Matchbox Recommender model, which has its external features. OK, let's thank uh, Constantina again. Thank you.